you doing? Good morning. Hey, such a lovely conference, hasn't it? So, my name is Alexandra, and I work at Skyscanner, a global travel company, one of the biggest ones. And a big thing happened at Skyscanner just two months ago, full rebranding, which means we've got a new beautiful logo, joyful look, and something that resonates with me most is a person deeply concerned of the environment and how we, as travelers, influence it. We've got an inspiring new mission. In other words, we've gone quite a long journey from this to this. Music, please. Where is music? It doesn't play. Anyway, I can just... <laughs> of September and we turn our new brand on, which basically means our website, our app, our columns, our storefronts, everything changes overnight. That's what you see from outside. However, what you do not see from outside is what it takes for a company to get to this overnight change, especially on storefronts where we had just three months to do the change, where we had limited resources where we had all possible dependencies on all possible teams, where we had hyperlocalized app with 40 languages, and we needed to get from something like this, extreme inconsistency across stores and markets, and absolutely no brand protection whatsoever, to this. And so, if you have all these dependencies, when you have limited resources, when you need to fight with inconsistency and no protection, your biggest enemy eventually is time. And the immediate reaction of companies is like, we need to hire more people to do this job. But let's reflect for a second and think about what, really, uh, what are real time killers for us, what really blocks us from doing big impactful things. Is it really limited resources or maybe just no automation in place? Is it really other people we depend on or probably it is lack of cross-team visibility and collaboration? Is it maybe a limited time or maybe just poor prioritization? The brand refresh is the biggest, most impactful thing you can imagine. And removing these blockers was not just an option for us. We needed to do that. And therefore, instead of building a big, beautiful marketing troop, we made a decision to merge marketing with product and engineering. So this is going to be a story about this one decision we've made that enabled us to do the full transformation, whole transformation on time with very limited resources and allows us right now to think more freely and independently about uh, about our future growth. So let's kick it off. Exciting, huh? <laughs> like what I'm going to say. <laughs> so, marketing and engineering. Let's start with, start with the brand refresh. Why we do it at all? So, from a strategic point of view, the full rebranding is a new chapter in the company's history. It is how uh, we think about ourselves and eventually how we want our partners and users to think and feel about us. But from the tactical point of view, the rebranding is a one-time change of everything. On stores, it is like icons, screenshots, titles, subtitles, short description, long description, etc., etc., thousands of files. So we needed to understand how we are going to do this change fast and not pumping up resources. 
And the best benefit of being a marketer inside the engineering team is that everything can be automated. And when I say everything, I really mean it. You won't imagine which resources your engineering team already has in place to automate a huge piece of your work. And I can talk like endlessly about this. But I will give you just two examples of automations that helped us with the rebranding most. So the first thing we automated was screenshots, our descriptions of stores. Again, Skyscan is a very localized product. It is what made us loved and used across the globe. So we deal with 40 markets, six devices, and let me say we want to show from six to 10 features. And that leads us to this beautiful number of 2,000 uh, unique images, screenshots we needed to create for the brand refresh. And to spice it up, we had just two and a half weeks to do that. This is the time we had between the final rebranded version of our app is ready and its release date, 24th of September. And we are like, no way we are going it manually. Mm -mm, not happening. So what we do, we take deep links that lead to specific pages in the, inside the app, like hotels, trips, flights, etc., And we open them programmatically in the emulator, taking the screenshots in the correct localization. Open capture, open capture, same process for all screenshots. After all screenshots are ready, we populate with them a pre-built uh, sketch file with designs in just one <coughs> click. Export them, and we are quite ready to go. The second thing we needed to automate is metadata storage and uh, upload. Again, before it would be a poor marketing manager uploading everything to stores manually, very irritating, very time consuming, and very error prone, you folks know. So what we do now, we store every single piece of marketing metadata in files and folders in our computers. And when we need to update them, we just replace files and folders. And then we used Fastlane, something that was used before at Skyscanner for app release process automation to op automate marketing uploads as well. I tried to calculate how much time would it take for us to do this transformation manually. Manually, it would take one and a half months and an army of people for us. We had just two and a half weeks. So we invested two weeks to set up the automation. And right now, it would take for us around one day to do global adjustments. And as a result of all these, we have always updated storefronts. Um, they reflect the current state of our app. We can run global experiments and updates. We basically unlock a new growth channel for us. But the most important thing for me, folks, is that Time spent on this unnecessary, unqualified, like irritating work can be now invested into strategic actions. Because you know, automation can help you with screenshots. Let me give you three examples with which, like, automation cannot help. It cannot help you with growing the brand, right? Can it? Not, of course, no. Why should we care? Because nine out of 10 top keywords on stores are brand keywords. And we decided to learn one day what it means for Skyscanner then. And we found out that the majority of installs are happening when users type in Skyscanner in search. And it's a aha moment for us. And the first thing we do is we start protecting our brand. I love how easy it looks right now, like we haven't spent weeks with crazy science calculations and business, a business, uh, building a business rationale for our finance team. But here we are. Anyhow, let's continue brainstorming about the brand. So um, having this source of installs is amazing. It is super protected, and there is no competition apart from Apple search ads where you can actually protect your brand quite effectively. Uh, but why so few companies do it then? Because it is very steady at the same time, and it is hard. Building a brand muscle is hard. It is harder than um, optimizing an app for, uh, for keywords. And like, what are you trying to say, girl? Like, is it um, just about then how, how are we going to grow and control brand then? After the brand refresh, among other metrics, we've noticed a fascinating 15% increase in brand searches. And we are like, OK, so if one of the measured traffic sources for our app, install sources, are brand searches. 
And if big marketing and brand campaigns are able to influence them, in this case, what if we stop thinking about our app store marketing just about as keyword and conversion rate optimization? What if we reallocate our resources and we spend time on integrating our app into big marketing and brand campaigns? And so we do. We put aside our keyword optimization for a while, also it is still very important for some markets for us to do, and we integrate our app into Black Friday. It happened just last week. So our app is actively participating before and on the day of Black Friday. And what we see is, again, a level up in brand searches with quite a long, beautiful, steady tail. It's not just going down right after it happened. But what's more important, it nicely transforms into statistically significant overall organic installs uplift. It's like, cool, great experiment, quite straightforward. Um, is it easy to integrate an app into global brand and marketing campaigns? Um, well, the short answer is no. A long answer I will give just right now. So for example, integrating our app, and let's take Black Friday example again. As an app store marketer, what I want to do, I want to add Black Friday metadata to our storefronts, and I want our app to get featured on stores. And I'm like, but when I start thinking about it, it starts unfolding far beyond our, um, our app stores. It's like, you need to have two releases, one right before and one right after Black Friday. You need to synchronize with lifecycle and content teams. You need to integrate a web campaign into the app and make sure that users who, um, who engage with this campaign get redirected back to the app with deep links uh, to finish their uh, booking journey inside the app and not on mobile web. And only after this old job is done, only after that we add Black Friday spirit to our storefronts and we get featuring. And only after that, actually, we are able to see 26% increase in global installs, which is quite cool. And I'm like, we need to have more of these campaigns. Yay, let's do it, folks. But the problem with this is not to have these campaigns but to have them consistent. It will be a very silly analogy right now. It's like you're going to the gym, you know? <laughs> one-time campaign, one-time featuring is not able to do a thing. You need to do it constantly to be able to see a steady browse growth. So therefore, what I should do, I should uh, partner not only with marketing and brand teams, but I should also work in tight collaboration with product teams who develop features that are interesting to our users, that are in line with Apple and Google goals and values, such as all-in-one tree planning, uh, greener choice flights, signing with Apple. Then these features can be coupled together with beautiful stories we create specifically for the App Store and Play Store teams. For example, how these featured features support the full transformation and brand refresh. And it works. Like these stories, they, um, these things, they end up in beautiful stories featured on stores. And it worked for us for Black Friday, for brand refresh. And what we want to do, we want to continue building up stories. We want to make our app visible. And not because I, a marketing manager, want to make my, our app visible and hit my KPIs. No, but because we are building something, we are investing resources into something that makes sense, that is worth to be noticed. And after that, we talk about it. So it makes me think, so maybe this hard work in long term game with no expectations about short-term gains and wins, maybe this is something that works and that leads us to consistent browse growth and not random seldom feature requests we are sending from time to time. So let's wrap it up, folks, at this note. 
I really want to be honest with you, and a lot in this presentation is still work in progress, which is quite cool. It is happening just right now, and I am not sure yet, uh, well, I do not know yet, whether all these browse games and brand games and integrations are going to work out for us or not long term. But we have th three strong beliefs at the same time that helped us to get our apps to marketing to the moment we are at right now, and I really hope that they will help us to get to make the next big step forward. So, and if I want you to take at least anything from all this presentation, so here it is. I truly believe that all manual work you're doing should be automated. We should automate and delegate as much as we can to start focusing on big things. I truly believe that growth is only possible if product, brand, paid, engineering, marketing come together. And a, a standalone ASO Samurai is no longer real. ASO is a connector between these teams. And I truly believe that right now is the right time to start stepping aside from common practices and what's been done and proven before you and start doing more bold, crazy things. Experiment, succeed, fail, teach each other. And even if we fail, even if it is a case of failure, and it will definitely be a case, we will definitely fail somewhere, we will do it having so much fun. Thank you so much.